Welcome to Engage New York, Module 4, Lesson 29. This is the concept development for this uh, lesson. So let's go ahead and begin. And remember, our, our um, objective in this lesson is to connect division by a unit fraction to division by one-tenth and one-one-hundredth. One-hundredth. All right, to get started, let's look at the problems at the top. Read the division expression using unit form. What does unit form sound like? Units. Seven ones divided by one-tenth, right? So let's read this one. Seven ones divided by one tenth. So, what question does this division expression even ask us? What are they asking us here? How many tenths are in seven? That's what it's asking us. So, seven is one tenth of what number? Okay, before you get started, let's go here. There are blank tenths in one whole. So how many tenths are in one whole? There are 10 tenths in one whole, and then remember it jumps up to one whole when we get there. So if there are 10 tenths in one whole, how many <clears throat> how many tenths are in seven holes? <clears throat> so if there are ten tenths in one hole, how many tenths are in seven holes? Seventy tenths. So there are blank tenths in two. How many tenths? If there are 10 tenths in one hole, 70 tenths in seven holes, how many tenths are in two? There are 20 tenths in two. And what about th three? How many tenths are in three? There are 30 tenths in three, right? Yeah. So... Seven is seven times greater than one, and 70 tenths is seven times more than 10 tenths. Seven times 10 is 70. So there are 70 tenths in seven. Let's think about it in another way. Seven is one tenth of what number? Seven. <clears throat> there are 70 tenths in what? There are 70 tenths in what? Seven. So blank is blank times greater than one. So seven is seven times greater than one. Right? So and... 70 tenths is how many more times? Seven more times more than and 70 tenths is seven times more than 10 tenths. So seven times 10 is 70, right? So there are blank tenths in seven. There are 70 tenths in seven, right? Excellent. Okay, it's 70 because I, you can think of a tape diagram. So if you thought of a tape diagram, here, 
and with 10 parts. So let's cut it by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, so if you think about that tape diagram, it's like 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 10 with 10 parts. So it has 10 parts and one part is 7. So it's 7 times 10. All right, let's keep going. So our next problem, 7.4, 7 ones, 4 tenths, divide by 10, by 1 tenth, is the same as 7 ones, 4 tenths, divided by 1 tenth, right? All right, so if you compare the problems to that we did, already solved, what do you notice? What do you notice between this and what we did up above? Here and here. What do you notice? How can you compare these two problems? What do you notice? Well, there are still seven holes, right? There's still seven holes, but now there are some there are also four more tens. The hole in this problem is just four tens more than in the problem that we did up above. So there are 74 tenths instead of, there are 74 tenths instead of 70 tenths. So if we ask ourselves, 7.4 is one tenth of what number? 74 tenths is one tenth of what number? Well, if we know there are 10 tenths in one hole, right? Think about it for just a second. Okay, I want to take that back. There are, I had 10 tenths in one hole, but we know that now. And there are seven tenths in seven holes, right? So how many tenths are in seven holes? There are 70 tenths in seven holes, right? 70 tenths in seven holes. Okay, but how many tenths are in blank tenths? Well, there are four tenths in four tenths, that makes sense. So there are blank tenths in 7.4. So if there are 70 tenths and four tenths, how many tenths are in 7.4? There are 74 tenths in 7.4. Yes? All right. <clears throat> now let's look at hundreds. 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 So how does this problem compare to what we've already done? So read this expression. There are seven divided by one hundredth, right? Which is the same as seven divided by one hundred. We can think of this as finding how many hundreds are in seven. How many hundreds are in seven? That's what we're trying to figure out. So, do you need to change your thinking in order to solve this problem? No, because the question is really the same question. How many smaller units are in the whole? 
how many smaller units are in the whole. That's exactly what we've been doing. So how many smaller units are in the whole? The units we are counting are different though. That's the only thing, but that doesn't really change how we find the answer. Will our quotient be greater? And remember the word quotient means answer. Quotient means answer, right? So, will our quotient be greater or less than our last problem? Will our quotient answer be greater or less than our last problem? What do you think? Well, our quotient will be greater because we are counting units that are even smaller. The units are just even smaller now. So there will be more of them in the holes. It takes a lot more of the smaller units to fill in the hole, right? It's the same basic idea but our divisor has gotten smaller. The quotient should be larger than before. Before we think about how many hundreds are in seven holes, let's think about how many hundreds are in one hole. So how many hundreds are in one hole? So think of that place value chart Here's the tens, here's the hundreds. How many hundreds does it take to make one whole? There are 100 hundreds in one whole. So if there, if there are 100 hundreds in one whole, how many Knowing this, how many hundreds are in seven holes? If there are 100 hundreds in one hole, how many hundreds are in seven holes? That's right, there are seven hundred. Seven hundred hundreds in seven holes. So what is the hole in this division expression? So now we're moving on right here to problem B. So in problem B, what is the whole number in this division expression? What is the whole number? Well, the whole number is seven, right? And what is this tenths? That's seven and four tenths, right? So how will you solve this problem? 7.4 divided by 100. Well, it's only four more tenths than the one we just solved. We need to figure out how many hundredths are in four tenths. We know that there are seven hundred hundredths and seven holes and this is four tenths more than that. So there are 10 hundredths in one tenth. So there are, so let's write this out. We know that there are seven hundredths in seven holes, right? And four tenths, it's four tenths more. And we know that there are 10 hundredths in one tenth. So 
there must be so there must be 40 hundreds in four tenths, right? So how many hundreds are in seven holes? Okay, there are seven hundred, right? How many hundreds are in four tenths? 40, right? So how many hundreds are in 7.4? 740. So if I ask this another way, if 7.4 is 1 hundredth, what is the whole number? Well, the whole number is 740. So let me, let me solve this for you. Let's go 7.4 divide 100. Oh, I just noticed something. This should be divide. Okay, 7.4 divide 0 0.1 or 1 100 is going to give you 740 because you have to invert you know what i'm going to move this i'm going to change this really quick so 7.4 you have to use the inverse operation and multiply by the reciprocal when i multiply by the reciprocal i have to multiply by 100 which is moving my decimal two times which is 740 right all right, so dividing and flipping that, that, that fraction to the reciprocal is 7.4 times 100, which is 740. All right, let's go to C, problem C. Here we go. So, can you explain your thinking here? Seven holes and 49 hundreds divided by 100. So, hmm, what do we notice here? What did we do? We just added a nine in comparison to where we were up here, right? 7.4 and now 7.49. So this number is just four, I mean, sorry, nine hundredths more than the dividend of 7.4 divided by 0 0.1. So the answer, without even doing anything, we knew that 7.4 divided by 100 was 740. So now, just looking at this, what should our quotient be? Well, 749, right? So I have to multiply by the inverse operation, and I move my decimal twice. It's 749, right? All right. So this is really simple, and it's just looking at it two different ways. Now, I'm going to rock your world really quick, and I'm going to jump ahead. And I'm going to show you using standard algorithm on this. I'm going to use this, this strategy. I'm going to use, I'm going to put, remember, the second number is what goes outside of the house. Now, what I'm doing here is I'm using the standard division algorithm here. Now, in order to divide this, 
I cannot divide with a decimal in this divisor. I have to multiply it essentially by 100. And when I multiply it by 100, it moves the decimal over here because the number gets bigger. Whatever I do to the outside, I have to do to the inside. And it's essentially multiplying by 100 over here. And I move my decimal two times. So I now have 1 divided by 749. How many times will 1 go into 749? 749 times, right? Standard algorithm. OK. Now. Let's try it one last time. How many hundredths are in six? How many hundredths are in six? Well, there are six hundred. Right? Show me how many hundreds are in 620. Oh, sorry, just kidding. 6.2 or 6.20. But 6.2. How many hundreds are in 6.2? Well, there are 620, right? How about 602? Sorry, I don't like that. I'm going to change that number. I don't like it because we just did that over here. Okay. How about 12.6? Let's go 12.6. How many hundreds are in 12.6? Well, you're going to multiply by 100, right? So you have to move your decimal twice. So there are 1,260 hundreds in 12.6. So what pattern are you noticing? What pattern do you notice here? So what pattern do you notice as we find the number of hundreds in each of these quantities? Well, number one, the digits remain the same. My digits are the same, right? The digits don't change. The digits stay the same, but they are in a larger place value in the quotient. So I'm beginning to notice that when we divide by a hundredth, each digit shifts two places to the left because the number is getting bigger. It's like, it's kind of like, it's like multiplying by 100. So, Dividing, dividing by a hundredth is like multiplying by a hundredth. That sounds crazy, doesn't it? Yeah. That helps us think of our division expression differently. When we divide by a hundredth, we can think this number is one hundredth of what whole number. But it's like going back up here. Dividing is like multiplying by 100 because you have to use the inverse operation and you have to use the reciprocal. So when we divide by 100, we can think of this number is 100th of what whole? Or, or what number is 100th of? So 7 divide 100 is really 7 100 So it's 7 hundredths. It's like thinking seven times 100 because seven is one is seven is one of a hundredth parts. 
its place value again, but this time the digits shift two places to the right. So when you're dividing by the fraction 100th, it's really like multiplying by 100 because you have to use the inverse operation and use the root and multiply by the reciprocal. All right, that's going to do it for our concept development. And now it's time for you to take on the problem set. And the problem set, right here, you're going to go through the same process that we did earlier in our concept development using these ideas here, here. Then here, you're going to simply divide by one tenth, one tenth, one tenth, oh, one hundredth, one tenth, one hundredth, one hundredth, one tenth, one hundredth, one hundredth. So remember, it's really like multiplying by the reciprocal, by ten, by a hundred. <clears throat> then we have Young bought four. $4.60 worth of bubble gum. Each piece of gum is 10 cents. How many pieces of bubble gum did Young buy? Then Cheryl solved a problem 84 divided by 100th equals 8,400. But Jane said, your answer is wrong because when you divide, the quotient is always smaller than the whole amount you start with. For example, six divided by two is three. And 100 divided by 4 is 25. Who is correct? So you need to show how you actually solve this. And then why is Cheryl or Jane, whoever is right, explain who is right. So you have to actually use words to explain your right. You need your numbers, and then you need your words to support your numbers. Then the U.S. Mint sells 2 ounces of American Eagle gold coins to a collector. Each coin weighs one-tenth of an ounce. How many gold coins are, were sold to the collector? So you remember, you have to use what we were just doing, the strategies we were just doing, in order to solve those problems. All right. You're going to do great on the problem set. Remember, complete the problem set, and then come back for the problem set debrief to check your work. Good luck.